Are you ready? Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, and Scott Robbins. We just become best friends. Yep. Making sense of it all. Now I get it. And having some fun. Lighten up, Francis. This is the Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. All right, let's do it. The Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins, thank you very much for being here. Less than two weeks to go, the election. Am I overstating it to say it's getting nutty? Oh, no, well, it's completely flipped. I mean, it's insanity yeah, out it, there right now. It's been nutty for a while, but, man, the ne- I don't think any of us are prepared for how nutty it's going to be in the next two weeks. Well, less than two weeks. Well, let's just jump right into it. Let's get to the Biden clip first. Yeah, well, Joe Biden said the quiet part out loud talking about Donald Trump. Oh, boy. He thinks he has a right under the Supreme Court ruling on immunity. What? To be able, if need be, if he, if it was the case, to actually eliminate, physically eliminate, shoot, kill someone who is a, he believes to be a threat to him. I mean, so I know this sounds bizarre. It sounds like if I said this five years ago, you'd lock me up. We got to lock him up. <laughs> politically lock him up. Oh, yeah. politically, politically lock, him lock him up. up. Okay, yeah. As yeah. his administration is trying to lock him up for real. Yes. Well, Remember when he said, put him yeah. in the bullseye? Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, 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 I didn't mean that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, it, it's interesting. Alex Thompson with Axios reported that a uh, former Biden administration official said, we got to lock Joe up because uh, he's not helping. And a counterpoint from a current Biden administration official, quote, This person is not named, but the quote is, for better or worse, no one is listening to him anymore, and his words have little power and less reach. It's a blip, gone in any meaningful way by midday tomorrow, if it makes it that long. Now, I don't disagree with that sentiment, but also that sentiment is freaking crazy when you take a step back and realize that man is the president right now. Now, he has the evolver institution. (laughs) I know. Well, I can tell by what the president says. Yeah, well, I could tell by the audio clip, though, quite frankly, (laughs) that he's doing much better now. Yeah. You're joking. Of course I am. I mean, it's bad. That, that that was incoherent. The first part of that clip was incoherent. Of course. It was just more of that stuff. Yes. Um, but still, best version of Biden ever. You know, the of the Supreme Court. Yeah, of course. I don't know what that is. Finally, the question from legacy media to Kamala Harris. Hey, what about Joe being uh, senile? Yeah. I mean, I'm paraphrasing, but you know what I'm talking about. It was kind of surprising. NBC's Hallie Jackson sat down with Kamala Harris and asked about Joe Biden being senile. Can Not- you say that you were honest with the American people about what you saw in those moments with President Biden as you were with him again and again, repeatedly in that time? She knows this is coming. Yeah. We all know it. Is she going to knock it out of the park this time? <laughs> A good answer? Let's see. Of course. Joe Biden is a, an extremely accomplished, um, experienced, and, um, and, and capable oh in every way that anyone would want if they're president. And you Absolutely. never saw anything like what happened at the debate night behind closed doors with him? It was a bad debate. People have bad debates. Should he? That, he is absolutely. But that's the reason why you're here, and he's not running for the top of the ticket. Well, you'd have to ask him if that's the only reason why. What do you think? I am running for president of the United States. Joe Biden is not. And my presidency will be about bringing... Stop right there. You're not answering the question. It's a glitch again. It's all pre-rehearsed. That's not a flowing conversation, obviously. No. That's the reason you're here. Yeah. Well, it's because of the decline that everyone saw at the debate that's why you're here and your answer is running for the top of the ticket well you'd have to ask him if that's the only reason why come on what do you think what do you think i am running for president of the united states and i'm not joe biden and we're back Mm -hmm. to the same nonsense yeah her grasping for words on the fly is like watching my three-year-old trying to catch a balloon (laughs) wow that's I mean, <laughs> that's a pretty good descriptor right there. It really yeah. is. It's like, almost yeah. got it. Almost got it. Keep it. No. Me. Nope. Oh. Darn. Yep. Alluded again. Presidency will be about bringing 
a new generation of leadership to America that is focused <laughs> on words. the work that we need to do to invest in the ambitions and aspirations oh of the American people. Yeah. It's a judgment question. That's why I ask. Can the American people trust you in these moments, even when it's maybe uncomfortable for Americans to, to have to, to level with Americans in that way? So that's why I ask. And it sounds like what you're saying is you feel like you never saw anything like that from President Biden. I have time. worked with Joe Biden, whether it, hours and hours and hours. OK, here we go again. Yeah, we all know you worked with him in a variety of places. But it's very important for her to let you know where. Over these four years, whether it be in the Situation Room or the Oval Office. Yes. Joe Biden is the one who was able to bring NATO together. No, did you ever see any sort of mental decline? Was he slowing down at all? That's right. the question. During a crisis where for the first time in 70 years, Europe saw and has uh -huh. seen war. Joe Biden has done the work that has been about being a leader on what we have done to fix so much of what has been broken in terms of the economy because of Donald oh Trump's gosh. mismanagement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I speak yeah. with not only sincerity, okay. right. but with <laughs> a, 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 a real firsthand uh. account of watching him do this work. I have no reluctance in saying that. No, of course I don't. Of course, we know you're the vice president. <laughs> Why do you state the obvious all the time? Account. Of A first-hand account. I have it. Yeah. Really? Oh, my I mean, God. Political win. He viewed it as a... F <laughs> and that's the moment where Dad realized Jack-Jack was never going to catch that balloon. <laughs> I mean... <laughs> I, I, it's just... I know. I mean... <laughs> oh, my God. I'd be a winner. Not really. Not really. <laughs> Did you ever see anything? Look... And, and the thing is, there is actually, I mean, it would be totally BS, but there is a way to answer that, uh -huh. which which we've talked about before, without sure. coming across as just right. a complete liar and buffoon. Mm -hmm. The problem is, is she is a complete liar and buffoon, so it's hard for her to do it. But you say, look, yeah, I mean, everybody knows the guy's in his 80s, and occasionally he would have mental lapses, but overall, and if you want to, you know, sell out... Or throw out, oh, well, the unemployment numbers are down and, you know, his plans are good. He has the clarity of vision, but obviously he slowed down quite a bit. So I would notice it occasionally. He would forget a name or something sure. like that. But overall, his vision is is twenty twenty. You could do that. 100%. <laughs> yeah, we've all seen it with parents, grandparents, whatever. You fill in the blanks. It's not that tough. Well, the amazing thing, and you brought this up, she has to know that question is coming. She has to know that she's going to get asked that question again for the like eighth time and still being unable to answer it is We've remarkable. We've never seen anyone this far along in a campaign that's this incapable. Yeah, right. And Joe Biden. There's no nice way to say that. They cannot put her out. I mean, this is another friendly interview. Yeah. Exactly. But even a friendly interview, even somebody like this, you, you are obligated to ask the question. Oh, sure. Everybody knows that question's got to be answered and asked and answered. But even at a town hall, they're not taking real questions. Well, no, Everything's predetermined. She has to know what's can't. coming right. and then still can't answer I it. Cannot answer it. It's I, amazing. It is amazing. Because she's an imbecile. Yes. And that's what it comes down to. Yes, it is. I, I, I used to think, man, you don't, uh, you, know, you don't rise to that level by being completely stupid. Right? And I used to think that. But now I'm thinking this person... It, just not very bright. Doesn't appear to be. Just not very bright. And I, then I want to uh, couch it and say, well, there's different levels. Like, as I've said before, she's not as dumb as, say, Cory Bush. Well, okay. That bar's low. Well, Would no. you agree? Well, yeah. no. Okay. Yeah. So it's not like completely, but you have to be able to be nimble enough on your feet to just take on questions. Yes. And have the capability to answer the question and sound like a human being doing it. She doesn't have that. It's just ridiculous because we all know she knew. Everybody knows. Well, and she's so pompous and arrogant, too. And then she's not likable to go no. along with it. it. It's why she was a terrible candidate in yes. 2019. Really something, man. Really Meanwhile, something. you get people freaking out. And, you know, I know we played this. It was within the last couple of weeks. It was political vet Mark Halperin telling Tucker Carlson, remember, he thinks... If Trump wins, it's going to be a mental health crisis. I say this not flippantly. I think it will be the cause of the greatest mental health crisis in the history of the country. 
I don't. I think tens of millions of people will question their connection to the, the nation, their connection to other human beings, their connection to uh, their vision of what their future for them and their children could be like. And I think that will be uh, require an enormous amount of access to mental health professionals. I think it'll lead to uh, 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 trauma in the workplace. I think there'll be some degree of are you being protest, serious? A hundred percent serious. Hundred percent serious. I think there'll be alcoholism. There'll be broken marriages. There'll what? be what? Yeah, yeah. And again, it's because you have millions of people in this country brainwashed to believe that Trump is quote the next Hitler or fill in the blank, like the face of evil. And that's what legacy media and left media has done over the last nine years and change. So that's where we are. And if you're thinking, okay, maybe that was a little overstated. Mm -mm. Nope. Mark Halpern is the first person I thought of when I heard this clip. Yep. This is bananas. Uh, this video is making the rounds now. An older lady uh, saw someone with a Trump sign in their front yard and flipped out to the point where she rang the doorbell to yell at the homeowner. This is from the doorbell camera. Roll it. Shameful. Are you the one that walks by here and always screaming at people? Uh, no, I haven't walked yeah. by recently. Okay, because a lot of people walk by and scream. Yeah, I, I'm not surprised. You are voting for the devil. Don't you know that? No. Why are you voting for him? Um, because I believe he is the moral candidate. Oh, my God. F*** you for that one. That's moral? Exactly what, that's how your side acts. Oh, my God. That's He's the most immoral person around, in your opinion. Hold on. You're voting for the devil. Yes. Yes. Oh, they believe that. That's not like a friend joking with another friend. You know no, you're voting for the devil. No, 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 no. that's no. not that. No. No. That's unhinged. Yep. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's, I'm sorry. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. Have a nice day. God, God. Unbelievable. Yeah. Very angry people. And just well, because they had a sign in their yard. What? Yes. That's it. Well, what I would, I would push back against the Mark Halperin theory because we are already in the midst of the worst <laughs> mental health crisis that we've ever known as a you nation. You know what? I, I don't disagree with that. And Some of the things I've heard, man. And it's like, this is the moment where I, I seriously believe this. And they won't do it because they're mission-driven communists, but media really needs to take a hard look at what they've been doing to the American people. Oh, yeah. They won't do it. No. Remember in 2016, it was, we got to get out of the bubble yeah, to understand Americans. Yeah. And we're, no, and now it's it's far beyond that. I know what mental illness <laughs> looks like. Yes, it yeah. looks like this. <laughs> Holy mackerel, man. Yeah, I think we're just starting to see parts of the freak out. <laughs> Oh, yeah, it's going to get worse. Man. All right. More to get to. CNN shutting down Scott Jennings. Why? We'll get to that much more straight ahead. Have you heard? You can listen to your favorite news podcast ad free. Good news. With Amazon Music, you have access to the largest catalog of ad-free top podcasts included with your Prime membership. Enjoy shows like The Daily, Up First and Consider This, available ad-free on Amazon Music. To start listening, download the Amazon Music app for free or go to Amazon.com slash ad-free. That's Amazon.com slash ad-free to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. Hey, at Total Wine & More, you'll love what you find this Halloween. <laughs> Thirsty. Oh, hey, Frankenstein. Did you enjoy that Cabernet? Oh, good. Want new red? Well, all the villagers are raving about this red blend. Ooh. And we have it at the lowest price in town. Economical. Find what you love and love what you find with the totally lowest prices for Halloween. Only at Total Wine & More. Drink responsibly B21. Warning. The following ZipRecruiter radio spot you are about to hear is going to be filled with F-words. When you're hiring, we at ZipRecruiter know you can feel frustrated, forlorn even, like your efforts are futile, and you can spend a fortune trying to find fabulous people 
only to get flooded with candidates who are just fine. F Fortunately, ZipRecruiter figured out how to fix all of that. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, you can forget your frustrations because we find the right people for your roles fast which is our absolute favorite F word. In fact, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Fantastic. So whether you need to hire four, 40, or 400 people, get ready to meet first-rate talent. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. Don't forget, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Finally, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. All right. The Markley Van Camp and Robbins Show. <clears throat> Excuse me. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. Before we get into the political stuff, I just saw a little while ago, Laney Wilson, you're a big fan, David. Yeah, I am. In uh, North Carolina to help with Hurricane Helene relief efforts. It's oh. still a mess there. Terrible. Oh, sure. There are good people in this world. Like every once in a while, just a reminder of that. She didn't have to do that. No. Bring supplies and awareness, and a lot of people are giving money. Mm -hmm. Some Very great organizations, Merit's Purse. Very others, commendable, man. Very commendable. Doing a lot of work there, mm -hmm. which is good. Okay, now back to the pit. This is CNN. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that, now that's a benchmark. Back to the pit on the Mark Lee Van <laughs> Camp and Robin show. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the media really doesn't want to talk about the fact that Kamala Harris's husband, Doug Imhoff, remember, progressive sex icon, redefining masculinity. That guy. But he's credibly accused of slapping around an ex-girlfriend and may have been involved in another domestic violence situation with the kid's nanny that he got pregnant. Yeah. Yeah. Cops got called out to that one. Mm -hmm. um, last night on CNN, one of the few conservatives on the network tried to bring that up as they were talking about Eminem campaigning for Kamala Harris. He was alongside Barack Obama. Has he been captured, too? Uh, oh, oh, yeah. 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 That was years ago. Okay. Yeah. Um, this is uh, Scott Jennings trying to tell the CNN audience, like, what's been going on outside of the CNN bubble. Oh. When you think about the things he has said in order to sell those records, and you also consider some of the questions that are swirling around Harris's own husband in this regard. Oh my I God. find. Okay, I find, you don't even get 12 seconds. A I find. I'm not going to let you go just, into I'm the just, far end of listen, BS. I'm just, I, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just telling I, you, Scott. Look, hold hold yeah, on yeah, a second. Yeah. Before they're freaking out, he said allegations. Yeah. That's 100% true. Yes, it is. Golly. What's their problem? All right, roll it. Go into the just, far end of BS. I'm just telling you, Scott. You can't. Listen, I can't represent you in the defamation case. And we are gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna stop here for a second. Defamation case. Yeah, we're gonna stop here. Yeah. There's a whole story in the Daily Mail. Yeah. With witnesses. So what are you talking about? Are you saying police weren't called in the case of the nanny? They were. And I believe there was a reporter at Red State who was on this as well. I, That's fear, man. That is totally fear. We're just going to shut it down. We're not going to yeah. talk about the fact that he is credibly accused of hitting at least one woman, if not two. Not to mention, you know, again, you want to talk about uh, being pro-woman and all this. She has never oh. spoken out about the fact that Doug Imhoff knocked up the nanny. No. No, and I thought we were supposed to believe all women. Wasn't that the left? You need to believe all yeah. women. Unless they accuse a Democrat of something. Right. When it comes to Joe Biden or Doug Imhoff. That, then that's, a, that's beyond the pale. Mm -hmm. Oh, my gosh. I saw a picture of her, Kamala and Maria Shriver. Do you yeah. see that one? The well, I saw a part of the The caption under it, though. What was it? Two women who have something in common. Both their husbands knocked up the nanny. Oh, yeah, the holy smokes. I disavow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. You see one in four adults going to dress up for Halloween this year? You going to dress as Arnold Schwarzenegger again? Uh, yeah, yes, I am. Glisten up the pecs and go shirtless? There I'm going to go as Arnold Palmer this year. <laughs> <laughs> Don't even ask. I know. This is the Markley Van Camp and Robert Show. Okay. 
Because our old friend Scott had, oh my gosh, <laughs> the fewest, unbelievable. Anyway, David, biggest story yeah, of the day. Biggest story of the day. Uh, Kamala Harris out doing a bunch of interviews uh, today. I think it's it's very interesting that even in friendly settings, she gets deer in the headlights constantly. Because if there is even one moment of pushback, I mean, she melts down. Also, a new hoax being uh, put out there against Donald Trump. And the people who are involved are denying it, are saying the reporter is lying about what is being written about Donald Trump. Yes. And their deceased family member. Yes. It's disgusting. Yeah, it is. We'll get to that and a round of What's Your Story? Straight ahead, right here. Van Camp and Robin Show. I'm Jamie Markley, the Gen X. David Van Camp, the Millennial. You know the sexy boomer. That's Scott Robbins. Hoax alert. Uh, Another hoax alert. Yeah, you may be hearing about this. In fact, CBS Evening News, this was the lead story for the evening broadcast from Nor O'Donnell. On CBS? On CBS, yes. Oh, man. Okay, roll it out. You had a great intro there, and I wasn't ready. Two weeks from Election Day as the final battleground sprint is underway. Every hour matters for these candidates as they try to reach as many voters as possible in the key states that will decide this election. For Donald Trump, that meant speaking at a roundtable in Florida at his golf club, courting the Latino vote after that campaign stop. A new report that Trump, while president, used the F word to describe a murdered Mexican-American soldier. That story is that Trump scoffed at the price of a funeral he offered to pay for private Vanessa Guillen, something Trump's team tonight denies. <laughs> Well, it's a lie. I'll start there. Uh, Vanessa Guillen, though, a tragic story, was murdered at Fort Hood back in uh, 2020 by a fellow soldier. And that soldier and his girlfriend dismembered and tried to hide her body. Mm. Uh, The man killed himself. The girlfriend has uh, pleaded guilty and is serving a 30-year prison sentence. The Atlantic claims, though, that Trump offered to pay for the funeral, then refused because, quote, at least what they're quoting, somebody is saying, some anonymous source... It doesn't cost 60000 bucks to bury a bleeping Mexican. Now, Guillen's sister says that's not true. By the way, I voted for Trump. The family attorney said the reporter was lying, and yet it's in the news anyway. The person who wrote the piece was Jeffrey Goldberg. Now, he's saying the family and the family attorney are lying. <laughs> the, the family oh, attorney, okay. by the, the way. The family's lying, Jeffrey, yeah, they, when you've been caught lying before. They they provided the receipts too. The 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 lawyer did, saying here's what we talked about and here's what wound up being summarized by this dude. Uh, now again, he's the editor in chief of the Atlantic, which is owned by a Kamala Harris supporter. Right. He's the same guy who pushed the suckers and losers hoax in 2020. He's a liar. Yes. Which has been resurrected, by the way. Again, of course. Dude, they're throwing everything at it right now. I mean, it's Hitler, threat to democracy, it's everything. It's yeah. kitchen sink. It's they the see the numbers. Yep. Yeah, I've got different numbers that I just heard, you know, earlier today. And Democrats are panicking. That's from Mark Halperin. Mm-hmm. That whole morning podcast he does, talking about all the recent yeah. numbers, everything else. Yeah, it's... It's like full blown, dude. They see what's going on, like in Nevada. And I don't even know if I should paraphrase what he said. It's more like um, if if this keeps up at this pace, um, it will be over by Election Day. And that's why part of the panic we're seeing. Here's part of what he said. Every analyst I've talked to in the last 24 hours, including people who speak publicly, say if this continues, Donald Trump can't lose because the Democrats can't possibly do well enough on on election day. So, Sean. So that he's talking about early voting. Tell people how you view this data now. We've got one more day in the bank. Every state is is either bad for Democrats or not good for Democrats. How are you reading it? Yeah, just as a little snippet. I think we're going to see a lot of crazy stuff. 
Oh, yeah. Meanwhile, I guess we shouldn't be surprised by this story, David. A Department of Homeland Security employee was promoting what again? Oh, illegal immigration. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's great, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, on, on social media. This is an official at the Department of Homeland Security had been promoting illegal immigration into the U.S. using platforms like YouTube and TikTok to provide advice to people crossing the border. Wilson Osorio is listed as an associate counsel with the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services Office of the Chief Counsel. Fox News Digital ran this. They reached out to the Department of Homeland Security and uh, to confirm the employment and for comment on the report, you, you know, you definitely won't get a comment on this, but uh, it looks like the YouTube and TikTok accounts were made private and the LinkedIn profile has been removed. The people who put this together who initially uncovered this is the American Accountability Foundation. So started posting in July and has posted dozens of videos to YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, etc. In one video, he shows an illegal immigrant who now owns a restaurant. The American dream is alive and well, he said. <laughs> this is the story of a Honduran immigrant who entered the United States illegally. With hard work and dedication, he is now the owner of an expanding restaurant, which brings in over $1 million in sales. There's also tips for, like, how to get paid if your employer tries to stiff you. I mean, it. this is crazy. It, it is. is crazy. By the way, if you're one of those people that told others around you, whether it was friends or family, that all of this illegal immigration was all by design, mm -hmm. and they told you at the time, well, that's just conspiracy nonsense, I'll s save you wondering about it. You're not going to get an apology from those people. Oh, no. More than likely. It would be nice to hear, you know what, okay, I give you that one. You were right about that. I was wrong. You're not going to no. hear that. I do not believe. Be no admission of anything. No, I don't think so. All right. It's that time. Do this every day right around this time. Go around the table, and it may not be the biggest story out there, but it caught your attention. David, today, what's your story? Welcome to the fall of America. Walmart is now selling prefab houses. With a bathroom, bedroom, living room, dining room, and kitchen, they are priced for just under $16,000 for a 380-square-foot home. These are not mobile homes. They're designed to actually be put on a concrete slab. Okay. Uh, the house is uh, manufactured by Sherry Industrial. They got an open layout plan with a small bathroom already equipped with a toilet and shower and kitchen cabinets. They say it'll last up to 20 years as long as you don't live, like, in a hurricane zone. Or mm -hmm. other extreme weather area. And, oh, oh, by the way, you, you will need to build the home yourself. Assembly is required. Well, yeah. Oh, if no. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. <laughs> so, you know what? I didn't realize until not that long ago, a lot of homes in the early 1900s were built that way. You buy one from Sears. Had you ever heard that before? I had no. Wow. I hadn't heard that either. And I'm older than you. Okay, fact check me on that, because I think I saw that on somebody's YouTube channel that was going through a rural town in the Midwest and talked about learning this, that you could buy these sort of prefab homes, which oh, I didn't yeah. even think existed. Yeah, and I'm like, that's amazing. I didn't even know that was a thing. I never learned that growing I up. I knew there were prefab homes. I just didn't know Sears sold them. Yeah, Sears Modern Homes. From 1908 to 1942, Sears sold more than 70,000 of these houses in North America. Holy cow. Yeah. The funny thing is, you could go to some rando's YouTube channel that just has interesting content and put more trust in them than legacy media. Right. Because, as we just found out, that survived the fact check. If we go through legacy media today, they won't. It's hilarious. Was that one of Kamala's uh, thing? There were 25,000 new homes built, right? Yeah. Yeah, well, from Walmart. From Walmart. Yeah. Exactly. All right, what do you got today <laughs> for what's your story? There'll be a real Wally world then, won't there? Yes. They'll all be congregated in one spot. Yes. <laughs> Welcome to Wally world. Uh, Bob Woodward's new book is out. It's called War. I don't know if you happen to see this description or not. Uh, Joe Biden's debate performance. Uh, it wasn't that even. It was a, a year before that in 2023 where a bunch of donors got together and said... Uh, this guy's senile. He never completed a sentence the entire night. I remember hearing about this. Yeah, and they disclosed this to Bob Woodward, and they put it. He put it in his book, which makes you wonder: 
What about Kamala Harris's claims that, well, or unclaims that she never knew anything about his she lied. debilitating performance? When in 2023, they said at this particular night, it was in Chevy Chase, Maryland, this particular night, he told the same story like two times in a row. Yeah. To an audience. So, at any rate, it's there, and uh, it's everything you thought it would be and more. Thank. By the way, Bob Woodward, thanks for always telling people after the fact. Like, way after the fact. See, that's, exactly. that's the thing, <laughs> right? David, I thought the same thing, yeah. I thought he's been sitting on this information for, what, well over a year now? Yeah. And never divulged it to anyone? No. Nope. I mean, okay. people, I don't want to I mean, people choose my words. The, the, there's been a response. Uh, I mean, it, there's so many examples, man. Well, Webster's New Dictionary b- 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 is now a word. Yes. Leading, te- leading tech companies. Yes, that's right. Uh, for my story today, I picked this out pretty much for you, Scott. Because you will talk about the WNBA every once in a while. Yes. Yeah, I think you had the story yesterday. They're talking yes. about striking if they don't get some more money because well, they, they only lost forty million instead of the projected fifty million yes. this year. So a ten million dollars savings, in other words. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, now, as far as their finals and the ratings, and I had to look this up myself. So I'm like, okay, someone said it's like record for them. It was the biggest in twenty five well, years. That's what I've heard. And so if you happen to Google. WNBA finals ratings. I mean, it pops up all over the place. You know, uh, 25 year viewer high, all time high. That's what I read. Ratings. Never seen it like this before. No. Like, okay. All right. Well, maybe there is something to it. I know we had the bet mm-hmm. whether or not they would eclipse 7 million viewers. Yes. They didn't come close to that. Dang. That was an easy bet. Mm. Uh, but as far as this, this record, you yes. look at. What happened Sunday night? Now, there was some competition. So you had football. That was number one. That's, mm-hmm. you know, millions and millions of there. Um, but seeing this ratings bonanza, it ends up to be 2.1 million, which I get is huge for them. Yeah. And that's fine. So I look at them like, okay, what else happened to beat it then? And you would figure there was a playoff baseball game. Yeah. And that beat it, of course. Um, and, you know, football stuff. Also beaten by the equalizer. The Queen equalizer. Larifer, you know, yeah, she's she's very tough in that. <laughs> <She> <laughs> don't mess with her. Mm-hmm. She knows martial arts and she's good with guns. Also beaten by America's Funniest Home Videos. Mm. Wow. Just a little context there. Mm-hmm. And then I happen to see Jason Whitlock uh, talking about how it was portrayed after the game from Holly Rowe, who is the broadcaster for the WNBA, because mm-hmm. right after the game, uh, this is what she had to say. Special thank you to the Minnesota Lynx. I don't know about you, but that is some of the most beautiful basketball we have ever seen in WNBA Finals history. Okay. Beautiful basketball. Jason Whitlock with his take. Winning team shoots 30% from the field. In the overtime, they outscore them 7-2. to two. There's more turnovers than made baskets in the overtime. <laughs> Two of your best players that are on the winning team. One is 4 of 15 from the field. The other is 1 of 19 from the field. One is 4 out of 15. One's 1 for 19. 1 for 19. My goodness. Holy mackerel. And I get it. Holly Rowe has a job to do. She's got to say, this is history. This is incredible. <laughs> and, and Sabrina Inescu's right. I would have been embarrassed if I was Sabrina Inescu. Bad shooting. I'd have been embarrassed if I was Brianna Stewart. Bad shooting. They yeah. sent her to the line. They handed her the game. She wasn't fouled. She took six steps. The whole thing's rigged. Yeah, he's not a big fan. So I thought you would enjoy that. Mm-hmm. I, I saw, too, where they, they they narrowly nipped Retirement Done Your Way, the infomercial. <laughs> <laughs> but it finished behind the WNBA finals. They're trying so yes. hard to hype this thing up. And you look at the... But at some point, Comments. it's like, it, it is. It's comical, though. I mean, please. I would agree Get on. If Caitlin Clark is there, they probably do better. Oh, yeah, 100%. Yeah. Why are Democrats losing black voters? The Wall Street Journal tries to tackle that. We'll get to it and much more straight ahead.
If you're living with dry age-related macular degeneration or dry AMD, you may be at risk for developing geographic atrophy or GA. GA can be unpredictable and progress rapidly, leading to irreversible vision loss. Now there's something you can do to slow it down to get it going slower. Iservay is proven to slow GA progression. Iservay gets GA going slower. Iservay or Avacincaptid Pagol is a prescription eye injection used to treat GA. Don't take it if you have an infection or active swelling in or around your eye. Isorve can cause eye infection, retinal detachment, or increased risk of wet AMD. Isorve may temporarily increase eye pressure. Your vision may be impaired after an eye injection or exam. Don't delay. Ask your doctor about Isorve today. Isorve, it's GA going slower. Visit Isorve.com. That's I Z E R V A Y.com. If you're familiar with what the inside of your gutters look like, that means you're spending too much time on a ladder, unclogging them year after year. This fall, enjoy the leaves without the clogs, thanks to Leaf Filter. Leaf Filter's award-winning patented technology keeps out everything but water. Right now, save 30% off your entire purchase at leaffilter.com slash listen. It's a great investment and offers the protection you need from water damage. Do-it-yourself projects can end up costing you more at the end. Instead, do it right with Leaf Filter. Autumn weekends were made for long walks in the woods, not climbing a ladder. Every installation comes with a lifetime no-claw guarantee and protects your home from flooding, roof damage, and more. Schedule your free inspection and get up to 30% off your entire purchase at leaffilter.com forward slash listen. That's a free inspection and up to 30% off at leaffilter.com slash listen. See representative for warranty details. The Mark Lee Van Camp and Robin Show, you know, Football is in full swing. The NHL and NBA now underway. It's a good time to check out Prize Picks. Prize Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. You just pick more or less on at least two players. Yeah, Prize Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Join over 10 million users. All withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure, and you can get your money in as little as 15 minutes. Prize Picks also invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out. If your lineup isn't perfect, you can double your money even if one of your picks doesn't hit. Yeah, Price Picks now offers Venmo for quick and easy deposits and withdrawals right into your account this sports season. Price Picks also offers weekly promotions that can lead to big payouts. Just check the app for more details. Download the app today. Use code MVCR to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. That's code MVCR to get $50 instantly after you play your first $5 lineup. Price Picks, run your game. Okay. Democrats need to run some game with black voters, losing black voters. Why? That's the question. Wall Street Journal attempted to answer. Oh, yeah. Jason Riley wrote a piece. Yeah. Okay. And he quoted Robert Woodson Sr. in this, who's been studying this for 50 years. Um, development programs in poor black neighborhoods. And it's pretty much what you would think um, that you see decades of failure in the black community, mm -hmm. people are saying, why? We do this every four years. They say, you vote, vote for us. We're going to do all this for you, and it, nothing works. So why wouldn't we try something else? And just anecdotally, online, after Obama told black men, basically, you're being sexist because you're not feeling oh, yeah. like voting for this female mm -hmm. and scolding them, there's a massive amount of backlash. Yeah. Seen it all over the place. And so you've got people coming out all over to try to do something about this, including one of your favorites, Scott, Spike Lee. Okay. Spike Lee went on MSNBC, Ari Melber, because all young black men watch Ari. You know that. Well, yeah. Ugh. And said this. Some of my brothers have been drinking that Kool-Aid. And I just hope that they get their minds straight, get their minds right in time for this election. And I got to give credit to President Obama because he's been he's been going really hard in on the brothers. Don't go for the okie doke, the flim flam. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. We got to support our sister. What? To be become the first woman president of the United States of America. And the first sister. 
that's one thing you hear again and again in different interviews. A lot of people in the community will say she's not black. I don't care. But it always cracks me up when you hear somebody else say it. Yeah. But on Fox, they talked to some black men in Detroit. I feel like her message is disingenuous. Um, she's trying to pander to black people. Um, just tell us the, uh, just, and she, she has a lot of issues underneath her administration. Just be honest about it. They, I think they assume that we're all stupid. Because they don't even really come out and uh, campaign really in Detroit because they feel like they have our vote already. I think. And you've seen that for years, too. Oh, yeah. This is not a surprise to a lot of people that have been paying attention. This is the Markley Van Camp Robin Show. Are you ready? Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, and Scott Robbins. We just become best friends. Yep. Making sense of it all. Oh, I get it. And having some fun. Lighten up, Francis. This is the Markley Van Camp and Robbins Show. The Markley Van Camp and Robbins Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. Okay, there's a panic right now. Democratic Party. We'll get to more of that coming up with the no BS election update. Um, but the Democrats have really been trying to sort of solidify the black vote for a while, and yeah. it doesn't seem to be working. Well, by lecturing to young black men. Yes. That, Obama, it, Spike Lee. Yeah. It doesn't work, by the way. You can't. I mean, they've been doing this to especially white dudes for a long time. Like, oh, yeah, you need to vote for Hillary Clinton or else you hate your mother. Yeah, you know, that, that nonsense. They've been doing that for a long, long time. Yeah. And, but, but they've ignored this segment of the population for years and just taken it for granted. Now, all of a sudden, you got to work for it. Right. Well, well and, and lecture. Again, man, what guy wants to be told what to do? Right. And particularly what by... human. And, and Obama, I think this shines off Obama to a certain it is. extent. I mean, yeah, it really is. It is. Uh, have you heard, by the way, they're calling Obama a boomer now? <laughs> <laughs> no, I hadn't heard that. <laughs> That's pretty yeah. good. I like that. Because he's yeah. just a scolding boomer now. Yes. You know? Yep. Uh, MSNBC, though, they went out to a barber shop to talk to black dudes, and the interviewer brought up um, uh, Obama's attempt to shame black men who don't want to vote for Kamala Harris. And one dude... Chad Fain, who apparently hosts a podcast, that's what he was billed as, had okay. this to say. And I just wonder for anybody who heard that, like what they thought of that. I was deeply offended. I was deeply offended. And it felt like a moment where it's like, you N-words better get in line mm. and do what we say. And it felt like the Demo him as the czar of the Democratic Party coming down to say, go get these N-words in line. And the general tone of it was disgusting. It was abhorrent. I don't respect it. I didn't like nothing about it. And Kamala, two days after that, is like, we love our, we love our black men. We, we have programs and things that we're rolling out for them. And she rolled out policy. Good cop, bad cop. You know, because well, I'm, I'm tired of the good cop, bad cop. Like, I'm tired of it. <laughs> you know, I think it comes down to a simple thing. No one likes being uh, or having assumptions made about them based on the color of their skin. No. Or assumptions uh, made about their motivations for doing something, regardless of what it is. And Democrats do this all the time. They put everyone into this little box that you can't get out of. It's like when she rolled out policy for black men. Well, we're going to give you $20,000 and legalize weed. That's insulting, man. Yeah, for for white is. guys, right? Oh, Kamala Harris owns a Glock. <laughs> Like, really? I know, man. They're like these little simpletons, we can manipulate right. them so easy by just telling them, well, we're going to help you sell weed, or I have a gun, whatever. Tim Walls hunts. Yeah. But who cares? Well, yeah, because, I mean, if you're sitting there going, you know, I really thought I was going to vote for Trump, but now that I know she's got a Glock, well, she's got my vote. Right. I mean, that's ridiculous. Well, this thing, too, that you bring up, David, sort of the, well, and if you don't vote, you know, whether it was for Hillary or for Kamala, it's because you're sexist. Right. Yeah. No that, other reason. Yes. By the way, Hallie Jackson, when she was interviewing Kamala, this NBC interview, it was almost like Hallie Jackson was surprised that she didn't take the bait. Like, you're not leaning into this, you know, historic run that you're having right now 
as the first female black president. You've been reluctant to lean into, to talk about the historic nature of your candidacy on the campaign trail. Why is that? Oh, well, I'm clearly a... You look surprised, David. She hasn't leaned into that? Yeah. No, I, it seems that she has. Maybe they I, think that she should more. I don't know. Oh, well, I'm clearly a woman. <laughs> I don't need to point whoa, that whoa, out to anyone. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, that's that problematic, is, isn't that it now? Is, I will not stand for that. You cannot define a woman clearly, okay, no. just based on looks. She that's, said clearly she yeah. is. You do not assume somebody's gender. For all I know, she's a guy mm. if Very she identifies offensive. that way. Very offensive. Yes. The the point that most people really care about is, can you do the job? And do you have a plan? Right. And she goes on from there. It's, and then it's word <laughs> salad. I'm not even going to take you through it. That's where it's like, can you do the job? Uh, uh, have a plan? Uh. All right. But this is, this is sometimes surprising, like MSNBC, because they feel like we got to go talk to voters. What's going on? Why aren't you black people voting for Kamala? So was Alex Wagner talking to a group of yeah. people? Okay, this is a little bit of a longer clip. I don't know if we have time. But as far as, no, it's can she do the job? But I think Alex Wagner wants him to say, no, it's because she is a woman. But What are your feelings? And I, uh, let me start with the women here about Kamala Harris. She's a woman of color. I'm not putting her down because of that. And I'm not putting her down because she's a woman. I'm not a feminist, so I'm sorry. But at the end of the day, I don't think that she has the personality. I don't think that. She has what it takes to go up against Putin and go up against these other presidents that are built for this. I don't want to be scared because my president is scared. I want my president to feel secure and manly and about it. We brought up gender, right? Like, do you think yeah. it matters? I get what that person's saying. Yeah. Like, there's a confidence, like everything's going to be all right. Oh, sure. She doesn't bring that confidence. No. That's just a fact. That she's a woman and people aren't comfortable having a woman in a top leadership role? No, I don't no. think that because most men, they, they love their mothers. They love their wives. So yeah. mm -hmm. as a woman, most men, they respect the woman. But she just don't have the qualification or the education to really run America because she don't have the experience. She don't understand our struggles. Mm -hmm. And for me to believe you for another four years, you're crazy. It doesn't pass the smell test. And I suppose you'll have an intellectual saying, she's very well educated. What are you talking about? Yeah, but I mean, if no. anything, that's an insult to every university she ever attended 100%. because she's an imbecile. Yep. Do you want to get to the part where they say she's not black? Because that's always fun. Oh, yeah, that's. That usually is pretty funny. Like, yeah. you're crazy. You're saying the same thing that you said four years ago. Okay. So the fact that she's the vice president That's to you the is a nonsense. Line. You're like, you've been here, you've had yeah. a chance. Yes. Well, for me, the very first time I ever heard What's the name this? Kamala Harris, it was an association to locking up parents for a truancy. Mm -hmm. That was the first time I, I ever heard of her name. And I, I really didn't understand how this person claims to be a black woman, but yet she's locking up black women and black men and separating families oh separating families how about that this is a thing that is trump talks about this a lot he says you know kamala harris became black right. when it was mm -hmm. convenient right yeah can you can you talk to me about do you feel do you agree with him on that do you feel oh, like she's wearing her black mask? absolutely when she sworn into the when she sworn to the senate it was as the first indian american thank you which is it's fine we don't care yeah. We all know she's not black. Let's understand it. We we are all clear of that. But my point of view, is, like I told you earlier, she's already been there. She's in office right now. See, dude, and that's got to drive the campaign and the liberal media bosses insane. Yeah. Our messaging's not working. People see through it. What are we going to do? It's so freaking hilarious, dude. <laughs> Well, it pulled it off for so long, they went back to the playbook because it's always worked. Different world now. Always. Yeah, it is. I agree. It's a different world now. It's a different candidate now, too. Oh, we've never I seen mean, one like this. I know. It's unlikable and, you know, unelectable as she has been, yes. David, you have a woke preacher clip? Yeah, there is a, a group called Evangelicals for Harris, uh, headed up by a dude named Jim Ball. <laughs> So he did an okay. interview All right. with yeah, News... Yeah, probably from Christianity Today, whatever. Yeah. He did an interview with News Nation, and I was kind of surprised. Looked 
genuinely shell-shocked when the reporter brought up the radical trans agenda that Harris supports. Okay. What is evangelicals for Harris stance when it comes to trans education, young, you know, biological males playing in women's sports, and the issues of teaching children to, in a form that some Christians think is indoctrination? What would you all say in response? Yeah. Um, well, um, we're actually uh -huh. more concerned. Uh, well, let me back up a sec. Um, <laughs> For us, um, oh boy. the Christian life is about fulfilling the great commandments, to love God and love our neighbor as ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, that is our calling as human beings. Uh, I can't help it, dude, to interrupt for a second. Megan Basham, Shepherds for Sale, the mm -hmm. book, all this is covered in there. Yep. And the love thy neighbor thing has been infused in these people for so long. Now they can't see clearly on a number of different things that part of the church got captured. Mm -hmm. And this guy's the embodiment of it. I yep. can tell that from a 10 second clip. Um, and uh, God has a, because God loves everyone, God has a special concern for those who are, are vulnerable, who are uh, endangered, those who are poor, um, those who don't have what God intends for them uh, in terms of the lives he wants for them. Uh, and so that's why God is for justice, uh, because God loves everyone. And what did Jesus say, sir? Those that lead the little ones astray, yeah. better with millstone around their neck. <laughs> yeah. Did you forget that part, bro? Right. It, mess with the children, you might as well go kill yourself. Yep. Said yeah. the Lord. <laughs> yeah. <I> mean, <laughs> that's what. That's how that part of the church has been captured, man. Yeah. It's really sad, and it's angering, to be honest. It is. All right. You know what? Just to lighten it up before we get to our No BS update, I heard uh, some people talking the other day, and they were talking about dating someone, and it wasn't opposite religion or some other different religion. Is could you date, say, a liberal woman? Mm. Or a liberal woman say, could I date a conservative dude? And it used to be not that big of a deal, but it's become a big deal, as we all know, especially over the last 10 years or so. But there was this thing going around online. What is the pettiest reason for not dating someone? Is that petty? Would that be considered no, petty? No, no, no. Oh, I'm okay. changing the gears to oh, what okay. they're answering here. All right. Is there anything that comes to mind that you've either heard about or you've experienced? To give you an example, one guy said she would snap her fingers whenever someone said something she liked. Every conversation was peppered with snaps, and I couldn't take oh, it. Gosh. Oh, that would be hard. That's not yeah. petty. That's okay. No, yeah, that's all right. Homicidal. Yeah. One guy did his Beavis impression from Beavis and Butthead, and the woman see? realized he kind of looked like Beavis. Yeah. And then she couldn't unsee it. <laughs> oh, and it was no. over. Yeah, you can't oh, no. go around. You can't go around doing that. No. Why not? It's for effect only. Okay, not part of your persona. If you go into it every once in a while. Well, what is every once in a while? I don't know. Once a day? No. Way overdone. Maybe if you had other skills, you could get by with it. Right. Well, maybe if you came in every night and went, Hello, now, boss, for dinner. <laughs> you know, you did that crap all the time. It'd be like, stop it. One woman said a dude had a Velcro wallet, and that was it. <laughs> I, had, I had one when I was like 12. Yeah. <laughs> You know, a long time ago, one woman told me the reason why she wouldn't date you, Scott. Did I tell you this? <laughs> I'm just making it What's up. What's the point? No, I'm there just, is that. I'm right, just okay. messing with you, dude. All right, our No BS election update more straight ahead. Hi, I'm Angie Hicks, co-founder of Angie. And one thing I've learned is that you buy a house, but you make it a home. Because with every fix, update, and renovation, it becomes a little more your own. So you need all your jobs done well. For nearly 30 years, Angie has helped millions of homeowners hire skilled pros for the projects that matter. From plumbing to electrical, roof repair to deck upgrades. So leave it to the pros who will get your jobs done well. Hire high-quality certified pros at Angie.com. 
Small business owners, we know finishing your to-do list can feel like climbing a mountain, but that mountain is also covered in banana peels. Then, when something new gets added to your list, you're like, nope, I'm already climbing this huge, super slippery banana peel mountain of a to-do list. At Progressive, we don't want to make your day any harder. That's why we make it easy to manage your policy on our mobile app. So climbing that banana peel mountain feels more like a leisurely stroll. See if you can save on commercial auto insurance in as little as seven minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage subject to policy terms and conditions. If you're familiar with what the inside of your gutters look like, that means you're spending too much time on a ladder, unclogging them year after year. This fall, enjoy the leaves without the clogs, thanks to Leaf Filter. Leaf Filter's award-winning patented technology keeps out everything but water. Right now, save 30% off your entire purchase at leaffilter.com slash listen. It's a great investment and offers the protection you need from water damage. Do-it-yourself projects can end up costing you more at the end. Instead, do it right with Leaf Filter. Autumn weekends were made for long walks in the woods, not climbing a ladder. Every installation comes with a lifetime no-claw guarantee and protects your home from flooding, roof damage, and more. Schedule your free inspection and get up to 30% off your entire purchase at leaffilter.com forward slash listen. That's a free inspection and up to 30% off at leaffilter.com slash listen. See representative for warranty details. All right. The Mark the Gang Camp and Robin Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. What time is it? Oh, yeah, that time. It's the Markley Van Camp and Robbins 2024. 2024. Are you running? Are you not running? Oh. Um, what is possible unburdened by what has been? Yeah, girl, I'm out here in these streets. No BS update. So, what's on your mind? Believe. This fight is about to <laughs> Everything you need to know. Without all the crap. And I'm a knucklehead at times. Oh, this is not good for the Harris campaign, David. I was actually surprised by this. I really was. Yeah. Um, Gallup, they've been tracking favorability ratings for decades for presidents. Mm -hmm. uh, and Trump has always been underwater. Usually he's somewhere between 38 and 45 percent favorability. Generally yeah. speaking, sometimes it got crept up a little bit more, closer to 50, but never over 50. For the first time, their new survey shows he is now over 50 percent, just barely over 50 percent. Thank you. In favorability. It's remarkable. It, it really is. And with everything thrown. Yeah, at yes. I know. Right. Kamala Harris is at 48 percent. Trump right now has a higher favorability rating than the anointed one, Kamala Harris. Oh, my God. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Because she's an imbecile and a communist, and people don't generally like imbeciles and communists to be president. And not authentic. She's a phony. People see through it, man. Well, Trump hasn't made any inroads into the communist and imbecile category. Well, that's yet, true. But he will. We yeah, don't she's need at 100% win, right now. You know? Yeah. Give him time. You know, during this campaign, when he went on the All In podcast, most dudes from Silicon Valley and guys that had hated him before were like, listen, man, the guy's charming. And I think his vision for America is where we should be. I was thinking at the time, if he could win those guys over, just sort of common sense going forward, how many other people could he win over? Because they were, I mean, they lost a lot of friends doing that. By the way, they threw the offer out to Kamala. You want to come on the podcast? Yeah. No, not happening. Same thing with Rogan. It's really interesting. Speaking of podcasts, Mark Halperin, you know, political expert. He talks with Sean Spicer every day and Dan, is it Turntine? He's the Democratic specialist, really knows how to crunch the numbers. They were talking about Nevada and they're figuring out, man, the Democrats, their stranglehold on the Hispanic and black vote is not there anymore. Why is it? And Halperin asked, this dude the question look i mean it's a great question and no doubt in wilmington they are frantically trying to figure that out I, I you know i think part of this is if you look at just not just in nevada but so far democrats are underperforming in philadelphia and atlanta and now we're seeing las vegas and what have we been talking about on here now for you know months problems with latinos problems with black men problems with young voters 
And so far, it appears that those problems have not been solved. As you said before, look, there are plenty of campaigns that have gotten off to slow starts, if not yeah. you know, uh, lost early voting, that have gone on to win. Yeah. But when one of your calling cards, one of the things that we've been holding our hat on during these bumpy last few weeks is we have the superior ground game and the get out the vote operation and Trump has outsourced his and it's an unproven model, things like this, you know, give you a little bit of heartburn. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of panic going on. And the prediction is in the next few days, you're going to see more of it, more panic and more of their operatives out saying, you got to get out and vote now. So we'll wait and see if that happens. This is the Markley Van Camp and Robin show. Biggest story of the day, David. Kamala Harris put together a five minute speech today to call Trump a Nazi and a fascist. And there we go. And, and there you go. This pisses me off. Jim Shudo from CNN. Yeah. Retweeted something from Second World War tweets from 1940. The caption was, under new German laws, teenage boys who failed to report for their local Hitler youth meetings can now be reported to the police. Jim Shudo wrote, it's not that long ago. Up yours, dude. Oh, yeah. No. Enemy of the people. Brainwashing people like that. Yes. Oh, and it's coming from your old pal, Scott. James Carville. No. He's going back to the Hitler talk. We'll get to that in a round of What's Your Story straight ahead. David Van Camp, the millennial, the sexy boomer. That's Scott Robbins. Okay, this just happened. This just came out. Yeah, uh, Kamala Harris reacting to a couple of stories that have been put out that Donald Trump admired Hitler, and John Kelly says that uh, he wished he had generals like like Adolf Hitler had, and all this stuff. Okay. It is pure desperation with less than two weeks to go. Oh yeah. Uh, so Kamala Harris gave a brief speech. Calling Donald Trump the next Hitler. You want to go through this together? <laughs> Why not? I cut Let's out the it. preamble because I, I don't want to make everybody sit through three minutes of it. So we'll go with like two minutes of it. Okay. Okay. In just the past week, Donald Trump has repeatedly called his fellow Americans the enemy from within. And even said that he would That's use the United States military to go after American citizens. Nope. No. That's not true. What? He was talking about if there were riots, people getting out of control on Election Day. Yeah. And at that point, to make it safe to vote, you would send in the National Guard. You would protect people. Yeah. He wasn't talking about going after his political enemies. That is an absolute hoax. Okay, go ahead. And let's be clear about who he considers to be the enemy from within. Here we go. Anyone who refuses to bend a knee or dares to criticize him would qualify in his no. mind as the enemy within. Receipts? There are none. No. Exactly. Never said that. Yeah, just, no. no. So I remember he was wow. referring to Antifa. Well, or, yeah, some sort of left-wing mob that may attack a polling station, which brings to mind, why is it that Democrats are so eager to have their foot soldiers destroy polling places right it's a good question hmm weird okay all right go ahead like judges like journalists what like nonpartisan election officials it is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous that donald trump would invoke adolf hitler oh. the man who is responsible for the deaths oh, of my six gosh. million jews and hundreds of thousands of Americans. Hold on a second. This is this is other level. It's desperation. I can't believe they're this. trying to get this guy killed. That's absolutely it's, what this is. It, yes, yes. That is so friggin' irresponsible. On purpose. 
This is stunning, man. When was this? Today? That was today, yeah. All right, keep rolling. All of this is further evidence for the American people of who Donald Trump really is. This is a window into who Donald Trump really is. Time out. From the people who know him best. No, it tells us everything we need to know Mm -hmm. about you. Losing a presidential election is one thing. But going to this level, lying through your teeth like that, tells us exactly who you are. Yeah. A terrible person. My goodness. And I know people could say, well, she's controlled. It's a machine. No, you have choices you can make. Oh. And you can say, listen, I'm not doing that. But they'll do it. Right. And you know, this is also a setup because you know how this works. This will be the lead on all of legacy media for their evening news tonight and probably yeah. again tomorrow morning. Oh, sure. To get out the, quote, Hitler message. Yeah. <sighs> Unreal, man. And no one's going to correct her. That's, see, that's the thing, right? You're at, right. That's it. I, I, am, I feel like I'm losing my mind right now, and maybe I really am losing my mind because, I mean, that they're claiming that Donald Trump said he would send the military after judges. Yes. When? When did he say that? He Give didn't. me the receipts on it. He didn't. No. He never did. You know who did try to sick the mob on judges, and that would be Chuck Schumer, top Democrat in the Senate. Remember? Oh, the whirlwind. Oh, if you if you overturn uh, Roe v. Wade, Brett Kavanaugh, you will reap the whirlwind or whatever he said. You won't yeah. know what hit you. And then guess yep. what? A little while later, a dude with a gun showed up outside of Brett Kavanaugh's house with a plan to kill him and his family. Yep. Oh, but Donald Trump's rhetoric is irresponsible because he talked about Arnold Palmer's junk. <laughs> right. <laughs> Give me a freaking break. Yeah, this is something, man. This is dark. All right, keep rolling. From the people who worked with him side by side in the Oval Office and in the Situation Room. And it is clear from John Kelly's words that Donald Trump is someone who I quote, certainly falls into the general definition of fascist, who in fact vowed to be a dictator on day one and vowed to use the See? military as his personal militia. Personal to militia? Carry out his personal and political vendettas. He never said that. What are you talking about? Now, this is all planned. Man. They really are. They think they know he's probably going to win. Yes. And they're they are absolutely going they're trying to get someone to take another shot at him. Yes. Is that the end of that? I mean there's a little bit more if you want to get to it. Yeah, uh, yeah, well, yeah, no, I think it's important. Yeah. Donald Trump is increasingly unhinged and unstable. And in a second term, People like John Kelly would not be oh, there to be the guardrails against his propensities and his actions. Those who once tried to stop him from pursuing his worst impulses would no longer be there. Oh. John Kelly was replaced. Yeah. She's also saying that coups are good. Yes. You realize that, right? Like that somebody would try to overturn something that the president, the duly elected president of the United States wants to do, working against him. Right. Wow. Yeah. And no longer be there to rein him in. So the bottom line is this. We know what Donald Trump wants. He wants unchecked power. The question in 13 days will be, what do the American people want? Thank you. Okay. Man, I'm stunned. I'm really, that's really something. That's way off the deep end. It really is. They're looking at these internals right now, and they're not seeing a way to get this done. I think that's true. I mean, there's no, there's no other way that makes any sense at all. Because, David, to your point, they're trying to get him killed. Yeah, I, I fully the, believe that. I, I do, too. I mean, upon hearing that, yes. It's almost an open invitation. Can't let this stand.
Adolf Hitler. Halpern said, Mark Halpern, we've quoted, you know, because he seems to know what's going on as far as the internals from both sides. And he had said he thinks that within the next few days, and I think that was yesterday he said it, that it is going to be a we got to get out the vote now sort of situation. You're going to see messaging almost like in desperation. Mm -hmm. and that's all I can think about yeah. is, well, yeah, it's happening today. And I think they're going to play this like some sort of October surprise. Dude, this is from the Atlantic. Yeah. <laughs> That's not even real news. I think I mean, uh, you know, it's a lot of it's fake news. We all know that. But the Atlantic is all, on another level of mm -hmm. lower. I, I think um, Elon Musk has an opportunity to do the funniest thing ever, which is to ban the Atlantic from X <laughs> 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 under their <laughs> under provisions against pushing misinformation. Oh, my gosh, man. I don't well, really want you, him to do that. I just think it would be really funny. Would, if yeah, it would be. The question is. Will any of these legacy media outlets do a fact check on that? Because that's loaded with BS. Mm -hmm. It's easy. Three jamokes right now on the fly can fact check it. You know Fox will. Will NBC? No. Will ABC? No. CNN? Nope. MSNBC? Nope, 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 nope. Too far into the tank. Man, oh, man. Okay. Well, that's quite an update there. Oh, we're going to have to make this a little quicker than usual because of that update. This is the part of the show we go around the table that may not be wow. the biggest story out there, but it caught your attention. David, what's your story? Uh, there's a guy named Lucas Kuntz. He's a Democrat running for Senate against Missouri Senator Josh Hawley. He had a campaign event yesterday that involved shooting guns, 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 alongside disgraced former Illinois Republican Adam Kinzinger. Both of them have military service backgrounds, so they wanted to go and get the gun guy vote. We know guns. Brr. Yes. Well, they were shooting ARs at steel targets from like 10 yards away. Whoa. <laughs> which which means that something's going to come back at you, or there's a good chance of it. That's, yes. that's very, very close for a steel target. Uh, a ricochet wound up hitting a TV reporter named Ryan Gamboa. It hit him in the arm. They dressed it, finished the event. They made a show of putting a tourniquet on it. Didn't need a tourniquet. And also, they put the tourniquet in the wrong spot. But yeah. It, strange. Josh Hawley wrote, I condemn all acts of violence against reporters and call on Kuntz to never shoot another one. Adam <laughs> Kinzinger responded. Adam Kinzinger said, Josh is such a dork. What about the police on January 6th? No, condemn no, not... those acts of violence. Also, the reporter is fine and it was a fragment. Guess you don't know how all that works. Yeah, it was just a fragment that hit a reporter. Right. Because you weren't being safe with guns. With your safety glasses on the top of your oh, head, yeah, that was always... which is also a great look. And, and I'll just say this to get in the weeds a little bit. The yeah. bench that they had where they mm -hmm. had all the guns and ammo, it was giving me a panic attack <laughs> because, I mean, it looks like someone just dumped a, a range bag on the bench. I mean, it, there's ammo just kind of haphazardly everywhere. There was a pile of pistols sitting together. Yeah. Just totally disorganized. There was Tannerite on the bench. Not mixed, though, so not kaboom. But I, it, it was just bizarre. It, it was like giving me gun safety guy hives watching that. <laughs> like, I would not stay at that range day. Uh, later, Kinzinger was talking to his buddy, uh, you know, having survived that, and uh, he wept. But you guys won. <laughs> you guys held. You know, democracies are not defined by our bad days. Yeah. We're defined by how we come back from bad, day, bad days. Yeah. Shooting steel targets at close range with an AR. Where's Darren McGavin when you need him? You shoot your eye out, kid. <laughs> Scott, what's your story for what's your story? Uh, you think you know TDS, but the witch community really knows TDS. Uh, by the way, the witch community outnumbers CNN viewers, but I digress. Uh, they hate Donald Trump so much they are attempting right now, to collectively, to cast spells on him in order to force him to lose the 2024 election. Or maybe even possibly a lot more than that. But they seem to be having trouble. They were strategizing and spell casting, and they're saying there's some sort of freezer spell against Project 2025. Now they've moved on because they can't get him. They think there's a protective 
covering around Trump of some kind that the witch's spells just bounce right off of him. And so now they're going after Project 2025. Oh, my gosh. They suggest uplifting their spells to help Kamala Harris and the Democrats. So they've got a blue wave spell, too, out there. They're claiming this is very powerful. Man, oh, man. So the witches don't the witches no. don't like uh, Trump either. So I'll make mine as quick as I can. It's kind of a wild story. You've probably heard parts of it. It's gone to the Supreme Court. Uh, the EPA has sued the city of San Francisco for dumping billions of gallons of sewage into the San Francisco Bay and Pacific Ocean. Oh. Uh, this is thing. It's San Francisco. They care about the environment. Yeah. Except for this sort of thing. And CBS did a report in May. They talked to Bruno Heydrich, lives in a houseboat along the waterway. I don't know if you remember this or not. It's nasty, man. It's foul. It's just not, you know, if you swim in this water, you better take a shower afterwards. <laughs> I mean, you get needles, you get syringes, you yeah. name it. Mm. I, I think it's just beyond help. It's, it's frustrating. So World News was covering this. And talking about how the EPA had set limits in San Francisco, it's like, you're asking too much out of us. <laughs> they and they're did? fighting this. Yes, and check this. There are wastewater agencies in Indianapolis, Louisville, Peoria, Illinois, Tacoma, all filed friend of the court briefs in support of San Francisco. Like, yeah, this is too far. <laughs> but we care about the environment. <laughs> Like, listen, everybody knows you don't swim in the Illinois River, okay? <laughs> well, y yes, you know that, but they actually say, yeah. yeah. Let us dump the crap in there. Oh, God. What's wrong geez. with that? Oh, man. Swim with those turds, Scott. No, yeah. Do it. All right, we got to get to another news update. More straight ahead ah. right here. What Tired of ads interrupting your favorite news podcast? Good news. Ad-free listening on Amazon Music is included with your Prime membership. Yeah. Stay up to date on everything newsworthy with podcasts like The Daily, Up First, and Five Things, uninterrupted at Amazon.com slash ad-free. Just head to Amazon.com slash ad-free to catch up on the latest episodes without the ads. This statement has not been evaluated by the FDA. This product is not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. When it comes to my lifestyle and diet, I don't always make the smartest choices. Touchdown! Woo! Hey, how about another round and some more chips? But when it comes to taking care of my liver, I do make one very smart choice. Active liver tablets from New Nordic. I used to have real issues with my liver, and at my last checkup, my doc was concerned about my numbers. But since adding a once-a-day active liver tablet, my gut's better, I feel great, and my doctor's happy. I ask a lot of my liver, so the least I can do to say thanks is a daily dose of active liver. You ask a lot of your liver, so give it the support it needs with active liver. You can find active liver at Amazon.com, or for a volume discount, visit NewNordicUSA.com. Go to NewNordicUSA.com, Amazon, or ask for active liver at your local CVS. New year, new you, new Nordic. Progressive presents 10 things on a contractor's to-do list that are harder than getting a commercial auto insurance quote. Bidding a new client, giving an accurate estimate, finding affordable materials, getting a client to pay you for work you already did, getting a client to pay you, period, securing permits and workers and tools, getting those workers and tools to work together, and finding the perfect pair of overalls. Pockets, baby. But the easiest thing on a small business owner's to-do list? Seeing if you can save on commercial auto insurance. Get a quote in as little as seven minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company affiliates. Coverage subject to policy terms and conditions. All right. The Mark Van Camp and Robin Show. You know there's a lot at stake in this upcoming election. Boy, that's underselling it. I mean, of mm -hmm. course, the economy, though, no matter who is the president, I mean, we've got some serious problems with the national debt. Yeah, four years of conservative presidency will not be enough time to turn the tide on the $36 trillion national debt. Say that with passion. I do. And, yeah, if the left wins, bad news. Oh, yeah. Say that. Uh, and you don't have much control over the election's outcome. You got one vote. You should use it. But uh, you can protect your savings by diversifying now into gold from Birch Gold. Yeah, for thousands of years, gold has stood firm in the face of greedy governments, economic upheavals, and global strife. 
and can protect you right now. Birch Gold will help you convert an IRA or 401k into an IRA in physical gold, and it doesn't cost you a penny out of pocket. In the past four years, the buying power of the U.S. dollar has declined. The price of gold has gone up. Yeah, text NBCR to 989898 to get your free info kit on gold. They have thousands of happy customers and an A-plus rating from the Better Business Bureau, and you can trust Birch Gold. Text NBCR to 989898 today. All right, David, you had what Kamala Harris said today, saying he doesn't want a military that's loyal to the United States, yeah. talking about Trump. He wants a military loyal to him. He's going to be Hitler. Yes. And then compared him straight up to Hitler. Yes. I saw John Daniel Davidson from The Federalist post out that the immediate purpose of this Atlantic story was to get corporate media and the Harris campaign to report this lie, Mm -hmm. to treat it as fact. Yeah. So that mission's accomplished. Sure. But the ultimate purpose, he said, is to justify the rejection of a Trump electoral victory. Oh, I think that's true. And if they're unsuccessful with that, well, they're lining up more lunatics to take a shot at him they have to know that's in play man yeah it's it's wow crazy when you think okay we know a lot's coming at us this october but some things you couldn't see that was one step it's like a really yeah. comparing him to hitler to this level wow this is the mark the van camp and robin show Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, and Scott Robbins. We just become best friends. Yep. Making sense of it all. Oh, I get it. And having some fun. Lighten up, Francis. This is the Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. The Markley, Van Camp, and Robbins Show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. Well, I guess the biggest story of the day is they're playing the Hitler card. Like, aggressively now. You thought you'd heard it all, right? You thought you you were, like, kind of numb to the comparisons between Donald Trump and Hitler. Yes. Until the vice president, the woman who wants to be elected president in less than two weeks, comes out and just, one, lies yes. about Donald Trump and things that he has said in the past. Yeah. And then... Well, well, it is deeply troubling and incredibly dangerous that Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, <laughs> the man who is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews and hundreds of thousands of Americans. Yep, the Hitler card. This is desperation. Yeah, and they're they're basing that off of something that John Kelly apparently said that he that uh, Trump said he wanted generals like. Uh, uh, like Adolf Hitler had, and John Kelly was so perturbed and disturbed by this that he waited five years to tell somebody about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Okay. Yes. Well, sure. it's all part of the scheme. Yes. I don't know if you know how this works. Really yeah. something, man. Trump, when he was a kid, had a dream. And people thought, oh, he wants to be a billionaire, a real estate tycoon, right? Well, sure, he did that. And then they thought, okay, he wants to do this reality TV thing with The Apprentice. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, and he did it. Yeah. And then he talked about running for office. People had asked him over the years, Oprah, people like that. I don't know if I really want to do it. It was all part of the ruse, see? Right. And then he ran and got elected and served four years as president. But he didn't really let anybody see what he was really about. Yeah. It's all part of the plan for this moment in time where he could take office and finally become Hitler, his <laughs> ultimate life goal. Yes. Well, yeah, he kept all those SS uniforms in deep in his closet. Right, sure. Exactly. No one knew they were there. Yeah. What a I load mean, it, of horse this is. You know, it's interesting, too, that she talks about the number of Jews that were killed in World War II, and there were thousands, as you mentioned. Well, millions. Millions, yeah. millions for somebody who uh, supports Hamas. Well, yeah. Yeah, and well, she says, "Well, the Jewish people yeah. could protect themselves. Israel, of course." Yeah. Oh, she's full of baloney on everything. These people are. Well, they, they, they're ramping this up, and I, I do believe, as as you pointed out a, a little while ago, there was a writer at the Federalist who said, "This is if it's unsuccessful in terms of getting Kamala elected, mm -hmm. this lays the groundwork for Democrats to try to overturn the results of the election." 
Yes. And if all else fails, uh, well, some lunatic is going to get riled up enough to take another shot at Donald Trump. Yeah. The other thing is also they want civil unrest. I'm convinced of it. They want that to happen on Inauguration Day so that Donald Trump might actually have the uh, National Guard poised and ready to rock. Mm -hmm. And he's going to use it. And then they're going to say, oh, see, he's cracking down on free speech. They're going to ignore the fire and highlight mostly peaceful protest. Fiery, but mostly peaceful. That's crazy, man. They're willing to burn this whole thing down because of Donald Trump. Well, I think part of it is, man. Call me crazy. And it's fine. All I can think is, what is the ultimate game? What is this? And all I can think is, you do have global elites, partly in the United States and partly in other parts of the world. The United States is one thing that gets in the way of what global elites truly want. And Donald Trump certainly stands in the way of that. With the mass immigration that we've seen, illegal immigration, closer to the ultimate goal, Trump stands in the way. They'll do whatever they can. They're that close to getting what they really want to get him out of there. And this is just another desperate play. I mean, they knew Biden couldn't get across the finish line. Then it was panic. What are we going to do? And they've tried to prop her up. I don't think we've ever seen media prop up a candidate the way we've seen with Kamala Harris. Oh, yeah. I mean, one thing after another. Look what 60 Minutes did. And they put these clowns out there. Kamala, Tim Walls. Like, like, this message is really going to resonate with a voter. It takes stamina to run for president. It takes stamina to be president. And Donald Trump does not have stamina. That's your message? That makes no sense to anyone paying attention. People that hate Trump could say, all right, I can't stand him, but the guy is out there all the well, time. Well, dude, she takes days off of the campaign trail to prepare for interviews. Yes. Today's one of them. Yeah, and Donald, yes. Donald Trump has more than doubled up on the number of media appearances since she became the nominee. Yes. And public appearances as well. This dude is doing like two rallies a day at least, yep. plus whatever podcast he's going to be on or whatever TV show he's going to be on. Yep. Guy's running around constantly. I look at his schedule and I'm like, I genuinely, I, I couldn't do it. I know. So that message, I mean, well, the people host, laugh at that <laughs> yeah. with Tim Walls, and then he takes a shot at Elon Musk. I this is from that. the guy that claps like a seal with his hands in front of him like this. <laughs> like he's trying out for the village people or something and says this. Elon's on that stage, jumping around, skipping like a dipshit on these things. You know it. That's vulgar. Dude. Oh, that's right. It you can... know, I'm offended. I'm offended by that. I heard children. <laughs> I'm vul <laughs> vulgarity from Tim Walls <laughs> offends me. Yeah. Jeez. Yeah, Mr. Twinkle Toes over there. Yeah. Jazz hands. <laughs> jazz hands. All right. Go <laughs> Governor Jazz. Yes. Hands. Governor Jazz. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, come on. So you try all these different things with these people. It's not working. You got Barack out there lecturing young black men yeah. telling them they're sexist because they won't vote for their sister mm -hmm. they're like up oh, yours old man get out of here yeah they're calling him a boomer now which, which is, awesome. is so great <laughs> yes i resent that <laughs> what do you mean i want no part of him in my boomer world <laughs> well you gotta deal with it it's just part of it leave him out it's okay um and then okay we'll just move on to other things the part of the interview yesterday because Kamala knows she's got to get out there. NBC, Hallie Jackson, it doesn't get much more friendly than that. No. Well, yeah, she asked Kamala Harris about, well, a number of things. But one was her belief that she articulated in 2019 that we should give illegal aliens in prison sex changes on the taxpayer dime. Yes. Although the, the question was way more sanitized. It was, do you think it should be allowed that people have uh, sex changes? Yeah, Hallie Jackson's an ally, you know. Yeah. So there you go. Very broadly speaking here. Sure. Do you believe that transgender Americans should have access to gender-affirming care in this country? 
I believe we should follow the law. I mean, I think you're probably pointing to the fact that Donald Trump's campaign has spent tens of millions of dollars. They're trying to define in, you on this. Yes, I'm asking yeah. you to define yourself, though. Just broadly speaking, I what just, is your value? Do yeah. you believe they should have that access? I believe that, that people, as the law states, even on this issue about federal law, that that is a decision that doctors will make in terms of what is medically necessary. I'm not going to put myself in the position of a doctor, but let's also understand that Donald Trump is running tens of millions of dollars in ads to talk about two cases to distract from the fact that his policy and plan is also to take away the, the Affordable Care Act. Okay. <laughs> no, I think the fact that you want the American taxpayer to play for to pay for illegal aliens in prison, a sex change operation that is troubling to people. What yes. do you have to answer for that? That's not a distraction. Mm -hmm. No, you said you were for it. Hallie Jackson, though, to your point, David, didn't ask a direct question like that. No. Or what do you think of trans in sports, biological males competing against females? What do you think about that? Yeah. Have That's the way the, she should have. Follow the law. We the law. We get the law. We the law. It's a man, baby. Yeah, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, such I'd, crap. I'd ask, what do you think about the report in the New York Times today? And they write it in sort of glowing terms, but the top researcher in a major government-backed study on children undergoing sex change operations and, and puberty blockers and all of that, they are withholding the results of their survey because it shows that that stuff doesn't help their mental health. No, they won't do it. They're no. withholding it, and they're admitting that they're withholding it. And they say, well, if we released it, our critics could use it against us. <laughs> what about protecting the kids? Right. right. And doing what's best by them? Yeah. You freaking ghouls. What's wrong with you? That's disgusting, man. You didn't hear hardly anything of the massive research done in Europe about this very issue. Yeah. That told people everything they needed to know. It doesn't work. Yeah. It's, it's a you, mental disorder. Or, it's gender yeah, dysphoria. Yeah. It's the only dysphoria that's treated this way. They won't tell the truth on it. You know, you got a lot of one issue voters that are abortion, abortion, abortion. I think there should, probably are a lot of one issue voters that are against having children have their penises chopped off. It could be. And, and that, I mean, if you are in favor of that, then I can't vote for you. I cannot vote for you. I can't. I won't. I understand. Yeah. So, I mean, but again, that's not exactly been a highlight of the campaign. No. But, I mean, she uh, will not put herself her. to actually no, be I know. asked the and, question. And, and, again, no one asked the question, then why would she? She's not going to offer the answer. No. No, it's terrible. By the way, I don't know if you saw this as far as Halloween. Is it okay now for a man to dress as a woman? So that used to be a thing. Yeah, I know. What do you think people said? Percentage-wise, closest two wins. Um, it's okay for Amanda. 80%. Seven, yeah, I'll say 75%. So Scott it's said okay. 80. Yeah. And David said 75. David, you win that round. 65% uh, said, yes, it's okay for a man to dress as a woman. 23% said, no, not appropriate. How about a woman dressing as a man? Is that okay? Hmm. 90% say it's okay. 82. Scott wins that one 69%. Oh. Said that's okay. Seems sexist. Uh, can a non Native American dress as a Native American? No, boy. To me, yes, because it's a costume. But I'm going to say 30% of Americans say it's okay. I'll say 28. David wins 52%. Oh, I'm a little surprised wow. it's that high. Yes. Yeah. 30% said no. Can a child dress up in a cultural costume if they're not part of that culture? Yes. And yes. what percent? 70, 63. 70%. <laughs> and you said 63, Scott? Yeah. Hey, we're tied now. That was 62%. Okay. <laughs> we're going to end with this one. Okay. I got a tiebreaker if we need it, but this will win it. Can white people wear blackface makeup if they're dressing up as a black person. Oh, boy. Percentage it of, used to be okay years uh, ago. I'll say 92% 90, said that's not okay. I'll say what I'm looking for is 
who the percent that says oh, it okay. is right. okay. 8%. 8% says Scott Robbins. I'm going to say 52% say it's okay. 52. Man, now I got to do the math on this. Uh-oh. I think it's I think it's going yes it is. It is David Van Camp with the win. Dang. It is 33%. Oh man. That says it's okay. So now you can fulfill your dream, Scott. What? Finally dressing up as Michael Jordan, your hero. <laughs> There's also another Arnold Palmer joke in there somewhere, <laughs> yeah, isn't it? Well. well, you showered with Michael Jordan. You've talked about it several times. <laughs> I can tell you. That. Yes. Okay. Gifted Who had man. the highest grossing country tour of all time? And a news update straight ahead. Price Picks has made daily fantasy sports accessible to all. All you got to do is pick more or less on at least two players for a shot to win up to 100 times your cash. Price Picks is the best place to get real money sports action. Price Picks invented the flex play, which means you can still cash out if your lineup isn't perfect. Price Picks is also the only real money daily fantasy platform with an injury insurance policy. So your lineup stay in play even if one of your players gets hurt. If your player leaves in the first half and doesn't return, Price Picks keeps your lineup live. They've got more than 10 million users because it's the easiest way to play daily fantasy sports. You just pick more or less on at least two players. All withdrawals are fast, safe, and secure. You can get your money in as little as 15 minutes. Sign up today by using code MVCR and get $50 instantly when you play 5 bucks. You don't even need to win to get the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. That's promo code MBCR to get $50 instantly when you play five bucks. Prize picks run your game. Hey, at Total Wine and More, you'll love what you find this Halloween. <sighs> Me thirsty. Oh, hey, Frankenstein. Did you enjoy that Cabernet? Oh, good. Want new red? Well, all the villagers are raving about this red blend. Ooh. And we have it at the lowest price in town. Economical. Find what you love and love what you find with the totally lowest prices for Halloween. Only at Total Wine and More. Think responsibly be 21. Progressive presents 10 things on a plumber's to-do list that are harder than getting a small business insurance quote. Waking up for 5 a.m. plumbing disasters, finding out why water is pouring from the ceiling, placing a pipe in a home from the 1800s, then dealing with invoices or your awkward apprentice or that really weird smell, and then there's breathing and eating, and of course, clogs. But the easiest thing on any small business owner's to-do list? Seeing if you could save on a business insurance that's right for you. Get a quote in as little as seven minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company coverage provided in service by affiliated and third-party insurers. All right, the Markley Van Camp and Robbins show. Jamie Markley, David Van Camp, Scott Robbins. That Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler. Yep, they play the Hitler card today. No, That's probably a big yeah. story. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I wonder if your old buddy, Scott, James Carville, basically predicted this yesterday. Because uh. this guy is, you tell me how unhinged this is. Okay. Hey, young black men, you might want to vote for Kamala. You might end up in jail. I haven't heard this one yet. Oh, yeah. And, you know... The other question is, were you better off four years ago? Are you going to be better off in a penitentiary four years from now or still having the right of free speech and the right of political dissent? Because that's literally what's, what's on the ballot. Okay, now let's talk some Hitler. And I suspect in 1941, I don't know if people thought they were better off than they were four years ago or in 1861, what people thought, but I know this. Yeah, let's go back to slavery, too. Yeah, oh, okay. <laughs> Because that's not unhinged. Yeah. yeah Don, Donald Trump has absolutely said that. Right. Yeah, we want to take it back it, to democratic rule in the 1800s when we had slaves. Yeah. Whoops. When it, the republic was threatened, people picked up arms and answered the call. Well, you know, when the, 1965, in the middle of the civil rights movement, I think people decided they want to take matters in their own hands and create a better country. And that's what I hope we do here in the next two weeks. What? What is he saying? Are you calling for civil war here? You tell me. Wow. Man, that's hot. They're losing their minds, well, man. I'll wow. just say this to, to liberals who are cheering on this Civil War type talk. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Basically saying you probably don't want that. No.
I can't believe what I just heard. That's your boy. That's exactly why. Why is he my boy? Because you always quote him. You know what James Carville said? Well. I've been saying that for years. I know. I'm done. I'm off the James Carville wagon now. And for years, I'd be like, well, who cares? The, the, he is a go-to guy on these networks. Absolutely. Because he says crazy stuff, maybe. I don't know. That's that's yep. beyond the pale, though. That that goes way beyond where he was before. These people are in full-fledged freak-out mode right now. It seems like it. Mm-hmm. Man. Yes. Oh, I mentioned highest-grossing country tour of all time. Country tour of all time? Who is it? It's got Garth Brooks. No. Oh. Anybody? I don't know. David? The stab? Um, oh, I've seen the headline. Okay. Then you know. Yeah. He was almost canceled. They tried to cancel him because he said some stupid crap when he was all liquored up. Oh, um, what's his name? Yeah, Kenny. Morgan Wallen. Morgan Wallen, yeah. I didn't know that. Wow. Yes. Well, he was playing like the baseball stadiums. Over the past two years, his tour saw over 3.1 million fans. Holy smokes. Dang. I don't know one song he does. Is that bad? You do. You just don't know the names. Uh, that would be my guess. Okay, probably. Wouldn't you say that's true, David? Maybe yeah, not. You'd probably recognize it, at least one of them. Yeah. Um, th- yeah, that's remarkable. Wow. Especially because when all that came out, and he called his white friend the N-word yeah, when he was all liquored yeah, up, all and then you had stations, well, we're not playing Morgan Wallen anymore. Yeah. Ah! The fans are like, get over it. He was liquored up. Well, that was how many years ago now? It was a couple years back. Yeah. This is the Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. Yeah. The fans decided that one. Well, he was well, supposed to play a ballpark not far from us, and they canceled it. Oh, yeah, remember. the weak need uh, concert uh, yeah. promoter. Yeah, yeah, I remember yeah. that. that no, was like we're be- not going to do that. Before he exploded into playing stadiums. You yeah. Know? yeah. Oh, well. It's troubling. Oh, my gosh. Unbelievable. I think I know the biggest story of the day, David. Yeah, biggest story of the day is that Kamala Harris is going to uh, bring us together by... <laughs> Calling Donald Trump literally Hitler. Hitler. Yes. And I've been reliably. When you're all in- out of ideas and yeah. you're desperate, that's when you go to the Hitler card. Yes. Mm-hmm. They lie all the time. Yes. 100%. All right. We'll get to an update on that. And then, oh, yeah, Scotty, you got your big three of the day. Yeah. The trifecta straight ahead right here. Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. I'm Jamie Markley, the Gen Xer, the millennial David Van Camp, the sexy boomer. That's Scott Robbins. So Kamala comes out today, and I mean, it wasn't sort of dancing around Donald Trump acting somewhat like Hitler. It's pretty much Trump's Hitler. He is Hitler. Yes. Holy cow. That's still wild to me. And Can't Van- help it. Vance is Goebbels. <laughs> that Donald Trump would invoke Adolf Hitler, the man who is responsible for the deaths of six million Jews and hundreds of thousands of Americans. Okay. Again, just... got to just state the obvious there in case you forgot who Hitler was. Yeah, right. <laughs> Thanks for the history lesson, Kamala. Very well, sharp. I, I think it is also amazing, again, and needs to be repeated as often as possible. The, the source of this is John Kelly, who, again, was so disturbed by all of this that he waited several years to tell people about it. Yes, this piece was from The Atlantic. Part of it already debunked. Uh-huh. The part about the dead female soldier, her family came out and said, this is nonsense. Yeah, that he had Trump's been nothing her. but supporting yeah. us. And the other source, Pfeiffer, has already said this isn't true. Yeah, for the Atlantic story, at least, because the John Kelly audio of him talking about Hitler uh, came from the New York Times. Okay. But the, uh, yeah, the one from the Atlantic side, every source involved in that story who is named has come out and said, I never said that. Right. That never happened. And the writer, Jeffrey Goldberg, is like, well, well. They're lying or confused. Oh, all those people are lying. 
Got it. You're the one who got it right. But all of your proof you can't show because they were off the record or they were sources telling you anonymously these things. Are the sources with us in the room right now, sir? This is such BS. And we know the legacy media is in the tank. But you had that clip earlier, CNN, where it's brought up about Doug Emhoff, allegations, yeah. hit a woman. We know cops were called with the nanny he impregnated. Don't even bring that up. This is, but, we can't have that on our air. And then the lead of CBS last night is troubling allegations with Donald Trump. And again, man, that conversation that Mark Halperin had with Sean Spicer and the other the Democratic dork. Oh, my gosh. But you could see the desperation was coming because they got numbers. And the early voting is not looking good for Democrats. Here's just part of that conversation no one will tell you no, no matter how partisan they are no one will tell you that the early voting data is anything but but scary for democrats so far and if on election day this trend continues the election will be over on election day before we know who votes the one interesting thing that i'm going to be looking for in the next 14 days is do democrats flip the script and start to say, guys, we're behind. If you don't go out and do this, Donald Trump will win. I mean, they, I, I think they, they will. I think they yeah. will. I think they'll do that by this weekend. I think you'll see the Obamas and, do and that. That's a like, go out and vote and go with the Hitler card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, that, the, the, well that, the table's been set now. Yes. Yeah. What? It's no longer off limits. You just say it. One one interesting uh, side note to this with the, Atl with the Atlantic story mm -hmm. that we're all supposed to be Going crazy over? Yes. The owner of the Atlantic is Lorene Powell Jobs, the widow of Steve Jobs. Yep. Um, Maze Moore on X is very good at this. And he dug up an old conversation that she was having with Kamala Harris on stage at the Recode event, whatever that is. Okay. About why she wanted to buy it and what the goal of the Atlantic is now. Interesting. It was pretty obvious to me that we could build, we, you know, we, we build out in a very cross-disciplinary way um, our work in you know, capital investing and policy and philanthropy, and we could do this work forever and ever, and we could have the narrative overtaken uh, by you know, by someone who's who has a lot of power, who's completely contrary to us, and we could never get to the place where we think we're part of a, a more just and equal society. And so, it was obvious <laughs> that if we could be part of the the creation of cultural narrative, uh, that would that would enhance and amplify all the work that we're doing. Which is Hillary Clinton talked about today, is telling the story, getting the content out there. Yeah, she was, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah. So, so these, are, these are early days for us, but that's, that's the idea behind yeah. it. We want yep. And Kamala Harris is sitting there nodding along. How arrogant was that? Well, they're activists, man. She also said, Hav. <laughs> By the way, I've had a clip all day that I have not played yet. I suppose this would be a good time to do it right before your trifecta. Yeah, what do you got? Well, it was Big O. He's out campaigning. And there's something he doesn't understand, and I wondered if maybe this would speak to you, okay. Scott, right. in some sort of way. Or you could speak okay. to it. All right. Roll it. I, I don't understand how we got so toxic and just so divided and so bitter. And I, I, I get why sometimes people just don't want to what? pay attention to it. And we all have friends like... How, how did you we... did it! <laughs> you did it, you jackass! It was you! You started it. You lit the fuse of division. Sowing division. You did it. That guy is... is... is the beginning of it. This, this, this is fake news. <laughs> no, it's not. It's you, buddy. You're ground zero with that crap. Come on, man! <laughs> You started it. Everything you did was based around it. Everything. Golly. The great orator. The great bringing the people together. Walking on water. What's wrong with that? Yeah. The great big O. <laughs> okay. You know, and by the way, in your 16 mansions you own, you jackass, 
that you got wealthy doing it. No, that's not who we are. Be, no, that's not who anybody is but you. And, again, I think this shines off this guy. I mean, he's You're out there le- lecturing. Okay, fine. He's out there lecturing people now on how they should vote? Black people? No, 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 no. All right, you all fired up now. You ready for your big three? But, damn, you know, I hate that. I mean, we're divided. You know, we're so divided. I can't can't figure it out. You did it. You did it. I hate Moneyball. You invented it. Are you ready? It's the three most important news stories of the day. Yeah. It's the trifecta. Well, at least according to Scott Robbins. It's the trifecta on the Markley Van Camp and Robbins Show. Every day about this time, Scott Robbins trifecta, helped by his hero. What's up? No. Yeah, <laughs> the great divider <laughs> who doesn't understand how Hi, we got to me, this point. Casey. Oh, it's Casey. Just can't yeah. figure it out. I don't know. I, I, I don't understand. Yeah, I know you don't. You do understand it was you. Scott Robbins trifecta top three God, of the day. Dang. All right. I'm ready. Uh, thank you, Casey. Three. Push him out of the way, Casey. <laughs> Shove him right out of the way. What you got for number three, Scott? Uh, well, this is something kind of interesting, and I just ha- happened to see this today. Uh, a lot of people who are getting married either for the, in the next weekend this or the weekend following or even on Election Day are doing something that's really interesting. More and more of them because they're bringing together a lot of family members into one grouping, are no longer allowing alcohol to be served at their reception. Really? And they're putting up a sign that says, no politics. Yeah. They're afraid people are going to get liquored up and the fights are going to start. Yeah. So they're, uh, they're collectively they're saying, no, we're not doing this anymore. One of the uh, was the Illinois couple that are going to tie the knot on Election Day. They were talking to the New York Times about this. They said the date was limited uh, because of the loved ones. So all None could attend. The venue had to accommodate and all that sort of thing. They are extremely worried. Family members would be anxiously checking the news during their wedding. And then, depending upon which way it was going, uh, would determine whether or not they were going to get into it at the reception or not. Wow. So they won't serve alcohol. No booze. That's probably for the best. And I, I can speak to personal experience on that. There was a, uh, I'll, I'll just say, it was my brother, not on his wedding day, but on one of our cousin's wedding days. And mm-hmm. on that side of the family, the liquor flows rather freely. Now, he is very far left, my brother is. Yeah. And he got into an argument about George W. Bush. This was 2005. Wow. Got into an argument about George W. Bush with a Marine who was in attendance at the wedding. Uh-oh. And it got loud outside and the marine hadn't been drinking very much relative to like my family <laughs> they, yeah. my brother was hammered and they're in the lobby of the hotel and he is screaming at a marine this drunk 510 twig boy is oh. screaming <laughs> at did the marine, marine show restraint he did show restraint and wow. then as i understand the story went uh, another cousin said yeah, you don't want any part of this. You need to just go go back in. Let's get a beer, okay? <laughs> man, <it's> like, <laughs> He's lucky on that one. Man. The solution is always to drink more. Right. Yes. <laughs> well, in my family, yes, until you yes. pass out. You can't right. fight if you're passed out. Scott. So that's true, yeah. Man, oh, man. Now, on with the countdown. Yeah, Scott Robbins, right? In fact, the top three of the day up to number two. Uh, <laughs> Denny's Corporation is going to close 150 of their Denny's restaurants across oh. the country. The company, which owns Denny's and something called Kiki's Breakfast Chain, claims that the locations will be closed by the end of 2025. Uh, Dozens of the 150 restaurants are going to close within the next few months. And they're saying they can't do it anymore. Uh, Number one, the ones are going to keep open. They're going to retool. Most of them will no longer remain 24 hours, by the way. And instead you can't of, get Grand Slam breakfast all hours? No. Moon's over Miami. You've got to wait. Oh. I know. And they said that they're going to try to trim the menu down. There's only like a thousand different things on that menu. Oh, yeah. yeah. Fried chicken or moons over Miami or <laughs> waffles or and the countdown whatever continues. you want. Yes. The Scott Robbins trifecta top yes. three. Yeah. Oh, and finally, one. Uh, even the experts didn't expect this, but Shohei Otani's 50-50 baseball was put up for sale at auction. Yeah. 
And this is the 50th home run he hit already. had stolen his 50th base. So the first person to do 50-50, right? They were estimating the ball to go to a million, maybe a million five. It went for 4.39 million at auction. Okay. Surpassing Mark McGuire's 70th home run ball, which was the number one, which is worth about $170 right now. Are you serious? It's not worth Mark McGuire's 70th home run ball? No, because of the Roids thing. If he, okay. Damages the integrity of the ball in the moment. So I take it the Barry Bonds 73 ball is not worth a whole not, lot. Either. Not like this one is worth. Interesting. That's a lot of money, though. $4.39 million. That blew everybody's away when it went for that much. Yeah, no kidding. Appreciate that. And there you have it. Yes. Scott Robbins trifecta, top yeah. three of the day. Yeah, good ball to have. Okay, I don't know how much longer David and I can take the dork talk. <laughs> no, I'm just saying. We're being nice. As a novice and, and collector. Now, now see, I the mean, bit I, is over. You see, that now that means you've extended your segment. No. And now we're going to have to say, okay, you got any other collectible news? Uh, my collection is still intact, yes, even after my Any of your months. Funko Pops go up in value recently? Not that I've seen. Okay. We love you. I know. You know that. Come on. My daughter's going to live better than me after I croak. Let's sell all that sell stuff. Sell my garage sale. News <laughs> update. Nimrod's the news coming up. Hey, at Total Wine & More, you'll love what you find this Halloween. <sighs> me thirsty. Oh, hey, Frankenstein. Did you enjoy that Cabernet? Oh, good. Want new red? Well, all the villagers are raving about this red blend. Ooh. And we have it at the lowest price in town. Economical. Find what you love and love what you find with the totally lowest prices for Halloween. Only at Total Wine & More. Think responsibly be 21. Warning. The following ZipRecruiter radio spot you are about to hear is going to be filled with F-words. When you're hiring, we at ZipRecruiter know you can feel frustrated. Forlorn, even. Like your efforts are futile, and you can spend a fortune trying to find fabulous people, only to get flooded with candidates who are just fine. F Fortunately, ZipRecruiter figured out how to fix all of that. And right now, you can try ZipRecruiter for free at ZipRecruiter.com slash free. With ZipRecruiter, you can forget your frustrations, because we find the right people for your roles fast, which is our absolute favorite F word. In fact, four out of five employers who post on ZipRecruiter get a quality candidate within the first day. Fantastic. So, whether you need to hire four, 40, or 400 people, get ready to meet first-rate talent. Just go to ZipRecruiter.com slash free to try ZipRecruiter for free. Don't forget, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Finally, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash free. Progressive presents 10 things on a food truck owner's to-do list that are harder than getting a commercial auto insurance quote. Stocking the fridge, prepping the stations, finding employees that get along well, finding employees that actually do their job. Looking at you, Gary. Balancing the books, balancing the flavors, having a fresh menu and fresh produce and fresh meat, but never a fresh mouth. But the easiest thing on a small business owner's to-do list? Seeing if you can save on commercial auto insurance. Get a quote in as little as seven minutes at ProgressiveCommercial.com. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Coverage subject to policy terms and conditions. The Markley Van Camp and Robin Show. You know, running a business is tough. Well, it sure is, especially with all the craziness going on right now. Who knows what's going to happen two weeks from now, a month from now? Are we even going to have a country? I don't know. Well, over 40,000 businesses have future-proofed their business with NetSuite by Oracle. Yeah, with one unified business management suite, there's one source of truth giving you the visibility and control you need to make quick decisions. They bring accounting, financial management, inventory, and HR into one fluid platform. With real-time insights and forecasting, you're peering into the future with actionable data. When you're closing the books in days, not weeks, you're spending less time looking backwards and more time on what's next. NetSuite helps you respond to immediate challenges and sees your biggest opportunities. Yeah, get started today by downloading the CFO's Guide to AI and Machine Learning at netsuite.com slash mvr that's netsuite.com slash mvr news update david van camp statement from the trump campaign after kamala harris came out and called him hitler 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 yeah today 
This is attributed to the Trump campaign communications director, but it sounds an awful lot like Donald Trump. The headline reads, Trump campaign statement on Kamala Harris lying and losing. Quote, Kamala Harris is a stone-cold loser who is increasingly <laughs> desperate because she is flailing and her campaign is in shambles. That is why she continues to peddle outright lies and falsehoods that are easily disproven. The fact is that Kamala's dangerous rhetoric is directly to blame for the multiple assassination attempts against President Trump, and she continues to stoke the flames of violence all in the name of politics. She is despicable, and her grotesque behavior proves she is wholly unfit for office, end quote. I think she's got some very deep-seated problems. Yeah. Grotesque behavior. Yeah. The guy's a stone-cold loser. But, her. Jake Tapper's over there. But, 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 but Donald Trump talked about uh, Arnold Palmer's junk. CNN was still on that. I know. Really? It's crazy. Yes. Oh, my. Abby, Phil, Scott Jennings, like, are you joking me right now? And I think it was... Jennings trying to say he he was joking. Yeah. Well, yeah. You know, that sort of thing. My goodness. A joke at the podium. I didn't hear anybody offended about that. And now we're offended about, about Obama. This. Come on. Here's what was funny about the Obama joke. A, it was actually funny. And well, it's B, okay when he does it. Was it. Unusual. Yeah, it's funny when he does it. It was unusual that he did it. This is par for the course for Donald Trump. Oh, Just God. for the record. Uh, what Obama said, which had actually, he never said anything. He about, literally did the he hands. Didn't use any words. He said, we know Donald that. Trump was talking about. Trump never said yeah. junk or whatever. Yeah. These people, dude, talk well, they're, about they're, par for the course. Well, they're humorless. Well, Abby yes. Phillip is an actual idiot. I learned that when she got her own show. Yeah, sometimes you get exposed. All right, we got to get to Nimrod. We'll run when the going gets tough. Damn it, this is too hard. The dumb get dumber. All right, Dan. It's Nimrod's in the news on the Martley, Van Camp, and Robbins show. I love the poorly educated. All right. Nimrod's in the news. Florida, 20-year-old guy. He had been Googling, uh, where does a church keep its money? And do <laughs> churches have safes? You can guess where this is going. What a dumb. Yeah, he's facing a handful of charges, including five church burglary charges, five criminal mischief charges. It goes on. Yeah, he's in a lot of trouble. Idiot. Got a lot to answer for there, son. Yep. That's Nimrod's in the news.